so that I can basically answer them in direct. Okay, okay. So, uh, first of course, oh wait, let me just scratch something because sometimes I just write the question that I have but then you answer it. So, uh, okay, just first of all, when we are, we want a design template, I just wonder what, where do I click to find that design? Like, let's say not like right now we had it, but like in the menu, is it templates in the section templates? that I have to go? Yes, so when you're in a new email, right? If you're in an email, you go to design, or really it'll be in the campaigns, right? So design, it will be already listed as my templates, start from scratch, template gallery, or recent emails. Okay, so but that, that section is in automation? That section is actually them. inside of campaigns. So if I were to go oh. to campaigns and I go to yes. create, I would say create campaign, got it. And then, yeah, and then you're able to go ahead and select the choice that you want. You can create the, the name of the campaign, you hit save, and then that same option layout will come out again. Yeah, got it, okay. And then when uh, you talk about like, you know like the, wait, maybe I'm, because I'm just looking right now. I don't know if it's in the dashboard. Oh, yeah, I find it. I found okay. it. So it's going. Okay. So the. Oh, and just to kind of tackle oh. back, I forgot about this button as well. So if Ooh. you ever wanted to create campaign, like templates, you mm -hmm. have the option to go down to my templates down here. Mm -hmm. And then from that area, you're able to also um, see the campaigns that you have as templates or landing pages that yeah. you have as templates. But it seems like it's actually not available in the free version. Mm -hmm. um, so unfortunately, it's it's just a limitation there. Yes, oh, perfect. And so what I was wondering, first thing, example in terms of like scheduling, I know like you could just have the email and then uh, like you decide when it comes out, basically like the, the date, right? Correct. And when you show me the thing with like, more of like automation and sequence and stuff like that. Uh, is that also possible to decide when each, or do you just have to decide like the delay and then with that delay? Sorry, so you're asking if um, you have to decide if per email how the delay and function, like the sequence would go? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, I'm saying like, does the sequence you can put dates or is it just more of like oh oh if you have to define the delay so yeah if you wanted to do a specific date of release then you can do that so you can have okay. the first one to say um let's go back in this test one like the trigger will be the date i guess so it would be, it could be a trigger as a date. You could say when um, reached the exact match of a date mm -hmm. or whatever the case okay, is. Okay, okay. Or you can say when they join a field and you want to delay it and then you can use the, the actual like delay if you want to delay it for a specific day of the mm -hmm. year. So you have that option and you can do a time at that time as well. You can also update yeah. your, um, your uh, time zone to make it match. Mm -hmm. So yes, okay. based on that. I see, I see, good, good, good. And then uh, I was wondering for the A-B testing situation, like let's say you in the campaign and then you do two titles, different titles, let's say. Um, and then I, I, I remember, I don't know if it's in the stats or is it possible to see a email specifically, a campaign specifically, like the opening rate? Or yes, so I like how they do it in here because mm -hmm. in here, and I'm going to show you, I'm deleting all the gibberish. So mm -hmm. in here, when you do A-B testing, um, it has you have, it's like a competition in a sense. So okay. you have the ability to say, okay, um, 
I either want to have it save, uh, you know, the different types will be the email subject or the from name or the email content, right? Okay. Okay. And then you're able to see exactly when they open it. So that's also a possibility. But uh-huh. one of the things that I like is that it allows you to do it. Um, it allows you to do it, but it also kind of like stops it at a sense of like, oh, A one over B or whatever the case is. That's how mm-hmm. I kind of rate it, um, which was always fun to see. Like if I were to do mm-hmm. A-B testing, then there'll be like that kind of information. And then this is what I was saying about you can either change the subject name so you have A over B. Or you can do a from name, so you can change the name where it's from. Or you can change the email itself version. So you can make different options if you want with the same subject name. And then in that, you know, you're able to do um, select your template if you want to select your template. And um, from there, you can go deeper. And let's wait for it to go. So it tells you to edit it for B because A was already edited. Um, So Mm -hmm. A, you're sending. So you're editing it now for B to say something different. And then you can do the copy the version for for A. So whatever it is that you want to like do for both of them, it could be different. And then, and I'm just gonna do this so you can see the full thing. Mm-hmm. All right. So then you're able to say, okay, who do you want it to send to? Of course, you want it to. So if you have one person. Then, um, or one group, it'll give you that kind of like breakout of, okay, we'll do it evenly. However, no, what if I don't want to do that? What if I want to make it only test a um, certain amount of people and not test everyone else? You know, then it'll be that, you know, if 20 people go into this group, then I want it to say that that's the winner. And then the winner can be by opens or by clicks. And you can set that day span of when it's, it's going to determine that winner. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. So, by the way, just a question. When they say select the size of your test group right here, like, it means that 25% will be sent to group A? Mm-hmm. 25% will send to group B? Mm-hmm. So, it will, say, then, mm-hmm. it will say that group A is going to be a population of 43 people, and mm-hmm. those 43 people are going to be just sent this section of this email. Then you're going to say group B is going to be the population of this set of people, and this 43 people will get sent this email. But you'll be you're able to also, like, say, mm, I really only want 14 people to say that the winner, um, you know, I, I don't want the population to be justifiable or whatever the case is. So it'll be 10%. So that's how it competes there. Okay, so I'm just making sure, like, the winner aspect here is, I don't, I just don't get the, what's the winner group? Is it okay, like- so the A is going to be the testing group, right? B mm-hmm. is going to be the testing group. Winner mm-hmm. is going to get, as it says here, the remain, the best performing one, they'll receive that. Mm-hmm. So let's say that you're testing 20%, right? 20, 21%. If B were to win, then the winner will get the email B. Uh, so because that came out on top, if they oh, if, if 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 more people opened it or clicked in it, then yeah. that's technically the winner. So then the remainder of your 131 people will get that email. Got it. Got yes. it. Got it. Got it. Got it. That's really nice. I got it. So even with the subjects, so, if you chose a subject and you're like, let's do A-B testing, and then a certain amount of people open that one, then um, whoever won will be able to get that email. Got it. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. okay, okay. Yes. Um, so it, maybe that's like too detailed, but it means like, let's say if you did A-B testing for a date, mm-hmm. they have to wait until the... I don't know what time or what at some point, which, well, I, well, I guess when we find a winner to send them. Right. So you would actually not have to do anything on your end. The system would say, okay, after, so if it says, it says right here, after the sending the test split, so this is a test subject here, right? So we're going to test them there. Then the remaining 76% will be sent the best performing version. 
and the winner will be selected by either the opens or by the clicks, right? Mm -hmm. And it will be sent to them in that approximation of your selection of dates. So if you want to send it to them in a day, then it will get sent to a day or hours. It could be an hour. So if you say, okay, we're going to test this for an hour. And after that hour, then the winner is going to get this email. Then that's how it will work. That's crazy. That's good. Thank you. That really answered that question. Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect. Um, and then I had like two other, which is the first thing is if you want to sort of edit something after, so you already set up a, I don't know, you have a sequence, Mm -hmm. let's say, and one of the email thing, you want to let change it. Do you have to restart your sequence from scratch? You can add the sequences as many sequences as you want or emails as many as you want inside of the automation. So inside the automation, what I like is that let's say that you're like, oh, I need to add this information because this is so crazy, right? You can Mm -hmm. then go ahead and it will tell you to pause the automation and then you're able to add it in there. Now, what I love about this is that once, let's say, group, like once somebody subscribes, they'll be at step one right Mm. it'll show you that they're at step one and it'll show you who um else may join in and they're at step one then once they receive step one then they'll be at step two but let's say somebody else joins in and they're now going to be at step one it'll show you that these people are at step two but you have these people at step one so it'll show you where they are so let's say that you're adding an email at a place where someone there's like a ton of people sitting here at step three um, but you mm-hmm. want to actually send an email prior to these mm-hmm. specific people. You can mm-hmm. add an email in b- b- between of this email and the one that's supposed to go here. Um, but let's say that somebody's already at this step, but you don't really want to send them this information. You want to send the people above them so it can be in your next procedure. You can do that. Okay. And But let's say right now we see a few emails, right? And so if I... Is there a way for me to edit... Yes. This email? So you would click into the email and you would do the same thing that you did before, just designing it. Mm, you can okay. update emails in the midst of it. So you can always edit the content. Mm, okay. Yes. Perfect for that. Yeah, it will just tell you to turn the uh, the actual... So it will tell you to turn it off in order to make edits. Yes, yes, yes. And um, other things is you talked about like having an email domain which is a, a term that I've heard often. But what always confused me is that in my head, so that's the thing, maybe I just have the the weird concept of an email. But let's say when I have Gmail, for instance, at the end of my e- email, that's what enables me to use the, the platform Gmail. So I was wondering when you have a domain where there is like nothing after, do you have another platform? No. So that is a great question. So with Gmail, Gmail allows you to have the personality that you want to bring forth and share that with the world, right? So Gmail in itself is their own brand. They're their Mm -hmm. own individual company. They have their own branding and their own style. However, you yourself have your own style. So pronounce the name for me again. El Dos. El Dos Corner, right? Mm -hmm. So El Dos Corner is your own brand. It's your own company. You want to be able to broadcast that, but you still have a Gmail account, and you want to make sure you keep all your emails and stuff in it. The privilege of domains, it allows you to basically have um, the, uh, the, what is it word? The white labeling of Mm. your actual email. So Mm. it just allows you to pay for, for, and I know your domain is probably free, um, it'll allow you to um, create that domain so that you'll mm-hmm. be able to trademark that in, in, in space of, of the internet. And then what will happen is that you'd be able to use that domain alongside your email. So it'll still be your email, but you'll create like now a prefix to it, right? So it'd be hello at Lados, um, Eldos um, mm-hmm. Corner right Mm -hmm. so it'd be like that or you know info at you know or whatever the case is and i'm Mm -hmm. over here showing your address i'll block it out but um what Mm -hmm. i want to make sure that you get is that it's not different it will be the same thing it's just gonna be something that um 
that now kind of white labels it. Got it. Does that make sense? Got it. Yeah, so it's not like a different thing. It's just a, like, I mean, it sounds weird to say, but like not a name, but it's like a new sort of like title, like yes. thing for my mountain. And then the biggest thing is, is that it allows you to feel more professional in your branding yes. because when yes. someone reaches out to you, you're able to say, okay, this is an actual company. They're not using their regular Gmail account. They actually have a mm -hmm. branded company. Mm -hmm. And also, I think it's better for when you send email too. I yes. So when you actually have that domain set up, you're able to add it here. It does give you mm -hmm. exact instructions as to how to do it. The first thing they mm -hmm. do is verify that email. And then mm -hmm. you're able to go ahead and um, set it up to where excuse mm -hmm. me. you're able to set it up to where you don't have to. Um, you're basically not going to be you're you're going to be more likely to end up in their inbox than in their spam folder. Mm -hmm. OK, mm -hmm. so you could do it that way. And then you yeah. have link okay. tracking here as well. That kind of like creates the link tracking of that utml that i was telling you about which i'm not too f fully familiar with how that works okay uh yeah i see i routine tracking so that is a uh, uh, um, good there are something else oh um wait i'm not trying to say i'm confirmed with this okay so when you show me exam the web the website or the landing page in this case so it's not like pop pop up stuff or whatever it is then i guess at some point yeah, after when you're done you have a link to that i guess and so after that let's say i make a landing page and i have the link to it now i can just share that link and then people can just go and fill in the form yes and then i guess now if i i set a rigor for them to be on the subscribing thing we'll just exactly them in the, mm, so you're able it. to do that and with the form that they filled out you've already set up in the pre in the the pre-setup stage you'll actually mm -hmm. set up which group they'll go to if you have an automation that's going to go there so it does all mm -hmm. of that there perfect perfect um, i think i was up for my question <laughs> Awesome. Well, I am glad that, um, you know, that answered your question. Mm -hmm. And I'm very glad that you, I've answered all your questions. Sorry about that. So I'm mm -hmm. making sure that I want to keep this open for you mm -hmm. and I'll stop. Mm -hmm.